Hello, Booktube. It's a bleak and barren Sunday here at Hyde Cottage, and I was, I'm wrapping things up and moving things around to start another week, <laughs> another week of the book parade. Uh, and I noticed when I was doing that that there was a, there's a used book haul uh, that I got and never shared with you, and I want to do that before the week runs out. And I think the reason I didn't share it is because the memory of it's a little traumatic, <laughs> because I did what I always do when I'm out and about, you know, with access to... Uh, really cheap good books I did what I always do which is to just grab everything I want but on this particular day in question I had no muscular teenagers with me <laughs> and it wasn't until I was well along in the process that I realized that meant I would have to lug everything I found back here at Hyde Cottage myself so maybe the reason I didn't mention this used book haul is because I blotted it out of my memory <laughs> I don't know, but I wanted to share it with you now, starting with a bunch of penguins. I found a bunch of penguin classics. Uh, the first one is The Campaigns of, Ar of Alexander by Arian, who was a, a general and a factotum, an all-around dog's body for the emperor Hadrian, um, and who consulted a lot of, of historical source work for Alexander the Great that we don't have anymore, and was writing at a time when that was the fad, when that was the fashion, was... Uh, historical scrupulousness so the even though the book was written centuries after Alexander lived it's it's still considered a, an extremely valuable source uh, and I only had the mass market so I'm very happy to have I mean, this is a perfect condition trade paperback so it'll last me eight or nine rereadings uh, the next was also Alexander related this is the Alexander romances the Greek Alexander romances uh, which are much older than Arian. They're, they date right back to the time when Alexander was alive, because while Alexander was doing all sorts of miraculous feats on the battlefield, uh, he was sparking fan fiction. He was sparking fantasies about him uh, that just grew in strength and number after he died. They weren't dimmed in any way. The Alexander in these romances goes to other worlds. He goes to the bottom of the sea. He meets supernatural creatures. He talks to animals. He has all sorts of superpowers himself. And these stories spread everywhere. And spawned, I mean, this thing is very thin, but it, the, the, the amount of Alexander literature that's out there, the folklore that's out there, is vast. It made its way into the Koran. Uh, and I uh, have a copy of this, but it's, a, it's an old, ratty mass market that wouldn't, you know, I've kept it because I didn't want to get rid of it, but I was very happy to find a clean copy of a trade paperback. Uh, and then we move on, we move on, we we're still in the classic era, but we move on from the Emperor Hadrian to his predecessor, the Emperor Trajan. Uh, this is uh, the letters of Pliny the Younger, uh, who was, a, again, a factotum, an all-around dog's body, but for an earlier uh, emperor, for, for the Emperor Trajan. Uh, and this is a collection of Pliny's letters to his friends and clients and colleagues and hangers-on and whatnot, uh, full of conversation and gossip and... Uh, invaluable insights into what a, what, a, what a smart, literate person would write about in, you know, in the first century AD. Uh, and then the, the final collection of letters in this, in this volume is official correspondence between Pliny and the emperor when Pliny was set out to, to oversee a province. And that's invaluable. We have a, a tiny fraction of what must have been a voluminous correspondence along those lines. And it's great to see it in action. Uh, even though I, a Pliny gets a, a little of him goes a long way in terms of how annoying he is, and you can sense uh, even in those brief and presumably very carefully curated letters back and forth to Trajan that he sometimes got on Trajan's nerves too. But nevertheless, an invaluable volume. And again, I only had a mass market. And this is a perfectly new trade paperback. Uh, and then we move to, to uh, centuries, cent centuries forward to, to the 19th century. And this is the interesting James brother. <laughs> This is Pragmatism and Other Writings by William James. There he is. Look at that face. Uh, uh, just a collection of, of his essays and some of his literary addresses that are... He's, he's such a good prose stylist. Oh, my. He's so good. And he didn't waste his time with the made-up stories. <laughs> so he's, he's a tremendous joy to read. If you haven't read uh, either his big famous book or any of these little essays... Uh, you might want to investigate. <laughs> and then the next one is a Penguin Classic that I do not need, but it was ten cents. So, I, and at the time, like I mentioned, I wasn't really counting the fact that I would have to lug it back here. <laughs> uh, and it's this. It's it's Middlemarch in this in this lovely edition. I will take I will take a uh, a permanent magic marker and just fill in all this white all this white wear and tear so that on the on the shelf it will look 
uh, completely new. And uh, I I have this here. I know that I have many, many editions of, of Middlemarch, including many Penguin Classics, but I'm not sure if I have one in trade paperback. So, you know, there's the slightest element of doubt, and I see something for this cheap, I just grab it. And then the next one, we go back to Ancient Rome. This is... Uh, a study of Horace by an author who claims that their name is R-O-A-M Lynn. I don't believe that for a minute, uh, but uh, this, is a, this is a study that I remember when it came out. It came out about 30 years ago, and I remember how interesting it, it, it was. And I, I read it, I think, from a library and then just got rid of it right away or brought it back or whatever. It left my collection, and I, I've thought about it on and off since then because it's, it's fairly interesting. It's a, a look at... Uh, Horace's biography through his public poetry, not his love poetry, not any of the of the the picaresque comic stuff that he's mostly known for today, but for the the public official poetry that he did for official occasions and whatnot. Uh, and it's fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Uh, it's a it's a uh, Horace volume to have, which you know he's he's near and dear to me. So, so I saw it in the midst of, I saw it on a shelf of, you know, Daniel Steele and Tom Clancy. All of a sudden there's this thing. I grabbed it, uh, especially since it was dirt cheap. Uh, and then another one, this is a book that I had years ago. I got it when it first came out. I loved it. It made the all important appropriate Steve reads list at the end of the year. It's the information by James Blake about, uh, uh really the history of how humans deal with information. Uh, it culminates in the present age when information is all, when information is king and God. But it, it has deep historical roots, and I just loved it. I loved every page of it. I was overjoyed to find it, since the minute I saw it, I realized my copy is long gone. Uh, and, you know, I, <laughs> I don't know where, but I'm glad to have it back. And then this this next one is when... This is, these, these last two are examples of that I really should have been paying attention to the fact that I didn't have any beasts of burden with me. And the first one is this. This is a lovely new edition of Bartlett's Familiar Quotations. I remember when this was in bookstores. This is, it's just a, a big, lovely red thing that takes you well into the, the present time, but also has all the historical stuff that Bartlett's is familiar and famous for. Uh, and when I first saw it, even though it was 25 cents, I thought, well, it's a steal, but don't get it, because you have, how, many, how many endless internet websites are there that give you quotes they're they're limitless, and that's at the touch of a fingertip. So you, you don't need a book. And then I remembered how many of those internet quote sites are full of quotes that are wrong. <laughs> I have no context and I have no research behind them. And every time I find one that I think might be useful in a piece I'm writing, I have to spend time double and triple checking it. Whereas with Bartlett's, you don't have to do that. They have an editorial team that does that for you, that did that for you, and makes a a great volume. So I'm thinking. You know, why not have this, especially since it, it was so cheap? Uh, the the answer to that being because you have to lug it home. <laughs> but but if that was true about this, oh, my God, it was so much more true about our last book. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is the volume that came out about 20 years ago of the complete New Yorker cartoon. It's this enormous thing that is just page after page after page of New Yorker cartoons. And uh, for, for the price... For its price, for 25 cents, I wasn't going to pass it up, but it weighs a metric ton. <laughs> and I, I, I absolutely love New Yorker cartoons. I always have. I, uh, they are the pre-emoji emojis for me. I honestly do believe that if I had a digital access to every New Yorker cartoon ever made, I honestly do believe that, like emojis, they could substitute for 90% of the correspondence that I do in any given day. Because they are, they, they, there's a New Yorker cartoon for everything that fits everything. That is a perfect expression of everything. Uh, so I, I, I've lost count of how many hours I have spent just contentedly thumbing through New York, the various New Yorker collections. And this one is the ultimate one. This is everything. So, uh, so I grabbed it, even though <laughs> once I got done with all these things, I realized that I had about 60 pounds of books to carry back here. And that was a gruesome experience for for someone who's a ripe old age of 28 and I made a mental note to myself not to do it again but I wanted to share these with you uh, just as I'm clearing the decks I'm clearing the tables and the shelves and everything to get ready for first thing on Monday morning when uh, UPS arrives and I'll be going to the Christian Science Monitor and looking at all the new books there afternoon the mail will come the mail truck will come FedEx will come uh, and we start the last week of August right up again. <laughs> so these these all have to be 
processed and inventoried and then put in their various homes. Uh, I didn't want to do that without sharing it with you, but uh, I'll, I'll let you go for now, and I'll be back soon. Thank you, Booktube.